Today is March 21st, 2018. We're in Athens, Georgia, at the University of Georgia at Athens. And I'm continuing my interview with Mr. Turner. It's good to see you again. It's good to see you too. Yeah, the weather's kind of cold today. <laughs> Very cold compared to it was. I want to continue learning a little more about the, your performances and your activity as a musician in this city. I took the liberty of going to your website, mm -hmm. your MySpace website, and I saw some information there that I, um, I just wanted to ask you if you could just provide more explanation. If you don't remember, that's fine mm -hmm. too. But before we even get to that, I'm, I'm curious to know when and why did you become a musician? Well, I just always loved singing. And uh, <clears throat> I was singing at the church and school, and every time I got a chance, I was singing all the time, you know. Okay. Did you ever want to become anything else? I mean, you didn't do it professionally, no. but did you have another aspect? No. no? no. It was always singing. Always singing. Did your parents <clears throat> perform? Were they musicians at all? My dad used to sing male chorus, but uh, my mom, she wasn't, she wasn't singing. Okay. Wasn't singing, uh, but was she involved with music at all? No, not at all. <clears throat> and so it's just your brothers, your siblings? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sometimes, I think I, I mentioned before, that's one of the things that I like to know. I noticed in, on your website <clears throat> that you were a, a backup um, performer for Randall Bramblett, um, who was a white rock country music mm -hmm. person. I don't <clears throat> don't remember a whole lot about that, but uh, I was somewhere singing and, and they asked me to do it and I did it, but uh, I don't remember a whole lot about it. Okay, and you don't remember the, too much about him? No, uh -uh. no, I don't. Okay, and then I also saw on your website where you have <clears throat> performed at the Sun, the Southeast Sun in Enterprise, Alabama. What is all of that about? That's just a church. Okay. Uh, we, we're from down there. Okay. And, uh, I think two other groups are on, on the same program. Okay. What's the name of the church? Uh, uh, so many churches, I can Oh, a whole lot of churches. A whole lot of churches, yeah. So when you say, when I see the Southeast Sun, what does that mean? Um, you know, I really don't know what that means. Okay. But the churches got all kind of names, you know, and I don't know what they mean. Okay, okay. It's just... And I didn't know if it was an area or if it was a church or if it was a, an mm. event or a festival. No. So that's why I was trying to figure out that. It was some type of church. It was a, some type of church. Okay. <clears throat> the other thing that I saw is the Klondike Gospel Music Center. What is that? That okay. used to be a church there. <clears throat> and church kind of died out. So you did start having, having uh, programs, uh, singing uh, concerts there. Okay. And that's all they do at that place. It's a Klondike Music uh, uh, Center. What kind of what kind of place is it? It's a, just a church. It's a church, and they used to be you have services there, but they don't have services there anymore. So all they do is uh, have concerts there. Okay, I see. Okay. And I was the first soloist they had there. They used to have groups and duets and that kind of thing, in choirs. But I'd, I met the guy that run that. Was up in uh, <clears throat> Louisville Quartet Convention, and he was there to see a program over there. And so he got me down. He said, "We we never had solos down here before. You be the first. So, so I was the first soloist they had in there. Mm -hmm. And when did you begin doing this? You know, roughly the years. Uh, yeah, I was probably probably twenty. 10, something like that. 2010? Okay, so relatively recent. Mm -hmm. So this Klondike Gospel Center only came into existence during the early 2000s or something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. <clears throat> um, even though it's not on your website, I see where you, you told me the last time we were together that you were involved with the Gospel Music Workshop of America. Yeah. Can you explain to me what you were, what your role was being? Well, they were putting the, um, it, we got choirs all over the world, you know, 
and uh, <clears throat> and they came to Athens area and um, to put a choir together and become a member of the GMWA. So I joined I joined the GMWA then, and that's that's back in this years ago, and I stayed with them about ten years. We had a choir. We had conventions, different city every year, uh, east, west, north, south, and uh, and they did that once in every year in August, and did a board meeting in April. So we go to board meeting for a week, and then go to the uh, convention for a week, wherever, wherever it was, and they didn't, 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 didn't repeat the different city every year. Except North went to New Orleans one year, and we went back to back New Orleans, and uh, went to back to back Las Vegas, and that was it. One time, then you go back, make the round, then you go back to start all over again. Mm -hmm. Was this during the seventies, maybe? Yeah, the seventies. Okay, and so you did it from the seventies to about the eighties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, what are the responsibilities of a board member? Board member. <clears throat> It's like uh, he's, he's in charge of uh, the city you're in. You're in charge of choir members, uh, members that join the workshop, and you kind of keep up with that. And you really have to raise funds every year to have have uh, dues you have to pay every year, individual and the and the chapter. So uh, and they so they nominate me to be the chapter representative of this area. So. Uh, I basically keep it together and keep everybody together. Now, who nominated you? The people here in Athens or the people with the gospel music workshop? Well, actually, people in Athens because people away didn't know anything about me. So uh, <clears throat> they want to get a representative for this area. And so they chose Zeke, you know. And uh, I mean, <laughs> I was in for a while. I see. Okay. <clears throat> did you ever meet James Cleveland? Yeah, several times. What yeah. did you think of him? I thought he was kind of neat. In fact, I met him several times. And uh, even before workshop, I met him before. And uh, I thought he was kind of a really, really unique guy. You know? uh -huh. Okay. And uh, it's kind of funny, though. The people in his in his, his department, they got good ideas or something. He didn't like, that won't work. Then next year, he ever read, well, let's try this. I think this might work. <laughs> and it's the idea they presented the yeah, year they, before. Yeah. Uh, he turned it down and he didn't bring it back up. So, okay. so that was kind of, we laughed at him about that. Maybe he had to think about it. About I guess so. Uh, yeah. What about his music? What did you think of his music? I loved his music. Uh, everybody loved his music, you know. And same with songs, you know. He'd write a song and they'd write a song and they'd take out and put in, you know, as they go along. And uh, he you know, come a little, little line in the song and he, he liked that. So. It's become James Cleveland's song, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but it, it really it was interesting. Right. Yeah. Did you participate in this choir? This two thousand thousand yeah. member choir? Yeah, we they had the James Cleveland Choir in workshop, you know, and they would sing at workshop every year because they had, had a night for had concerts every night at the workshop, you know. You don't get up, you know, get to bed till three or four o'clock in the morning doing choirs and quartets and all that, in groups, so. So I got to sing his choir, James, James Cleveland Choir, mm -hmm. and uh, that was pretty neat. Right. Did you know Thurston Frazier? Mm -hmm. Do you know, did you meet him? I met him too, yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. really? Yeah. Because I, when I started my research, by that time he'd passed away. Yeah. yeah. But everybody used to talk, talk about him, and I think they named a choir in his honor, didn't they? I believe so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and there are some people who believe that Thurston is the one who sort of introduced <laughs> James to the big choir. Yeah, okay. Because oh. I guess when Cleveland came from what, Detroit and Chicago, he'd done you know all these small groups yeah. and mm -hmm. all of that, but he'd never done big choirs. Yeah. But I, he came, and Thurston Frazier was known for the big choir and mm -hmm. Echoes of Eden and all of that. And yeah. With um, so it's almost like he learned and learned from him. James yeah. Cleveland learned from Thurston Frazier. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What do you think about that story? Well, you know, I don't know a lot about how they how they got together and this kind of thing, but I do do know all all singers and groups. They kind of learn from each other, help each other along the way, mm -hmm. and uh, 
And so it comes with a small idea and it begins to grow. You know. People mm -hmm. keep turning a bit to it and uh, then it becomes big after a while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they just kind of help each other. Right, right. Did any of your people introduce any music? You know, I think Rodina used to, people send music to her and she would make the final selections. Yeah, yeah well, <clears throat> yeah, they would do it all the time. They, they have, uh, you have to get your music together. Uh, <clears throat> she had written her own music and, uh, and a CD and you send it in, uh, you know, at some point before the convention. And a group there will go through and, and pick songs that we're going to use. And they, most of the time they bring their own soloists with the, with the, with the music. And uh, so they have their own soloists there most of the time. And so they didn't have to find nobody or they bring the soloists with them. And Rodina's a part of putting that together. So she, uh, she was a very important part in that. And she have a certain group to pick the songs, you know, so. So it, that turned out pretty good. Yeah. Right. It really had a major impact because the music that they recorded or you guys recorded went to different parts of the world. That's right. And if it got on that thing, that <clears throat> means it's almost like the top ten. That's and right. And people would be singing it for the rest of their lives. That's right. They, they so it was doing James Cleveland songs. You know? Yeah. Because so. people come from workshop all over the world. And they take that music, and they got music packs to get music in. If you sing in the choir, you get all that music, other music too. And you take it back home, teach yeah. your local choir. And, right. And, uh, and, and thousands of people, anywhere, at least from what, what I gather, anywhere from 10 to 20,000 people. Yeah, you have sometimes 20 something thousand people get those workshops. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. to be on the board and all of that, that that's major. That's mm -hmm. really major. I want to talk now, coming back to Athens. Um, how would you describe <clears throat> the music community in Athens when you were growing up? Was, was there a lot of um, music in the religious community and was there music in the secular community at all? How would you describe it? Yes, there was music in the um, Christian music because everybody wants to sing Christmas. Christian music, you know, they have little quartets and duets and that kind of thing, more than the rock style. They were yet more, more more Christian music than than anything, and that was really plentiful as I was growing up. You know, not as much now. Maybe I don't pay much attention now, but back then everybody was doing it. You know, so it got pretty interesting. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So you would say in the black community there are more musicians who are performing religious music as opposed to... Yeah, I think it was. Um, I'm not sure if it was more than the other groups, other groups, but uh, it was um, a lot of them, lot of them because that's where I was. So I saw it all the time, mm -hmm. and I didn't see as many, many other, other organizations doing it, you know. Okay. But I'm sure it was. Right. <clears throat> well, but um, during that time, were there any places where blacks went to hear, say, secular music? You know, you were saying that you were performing James Brown and all of that kind of, all this yeah. Reading kind of music. Were there any places in the city where you would go and you would perform or people would hear that kind of music? Yeah, yeah, you'd go to, uh, <clears throat> they have a club you could go to and do that. Mm -hmm. And they would do it like... Um, like the schools would have certain things and they would go and play for that. Like I was saying, like at the university, the guys would get, get groups to come and play for them, like mm -hmm. on weekends and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it was, uh, it was pretty plentiful. Right. Do you remember the names of any of the clubs that used to um, mm. sort of promote that kind of music? Uh, that was J.C. J. Maddox Club. Uh, people go there and play all the time. And uh, I can't remember any others right off. Okay. Where was that one located? That's over off, off of um, Baxter Street. Baxter. Off of Baxter, right on the corner of Baxter, right across from the library. You know where the library is? Right. Right across the street from the library. Okay. It's right there. So mm -hmm. it's right in the heart of town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. Sometimes kind of clubs, at least in small towns, are outside town. Yeah, right. <laughs> 
exactly. <laughs> outside the city that's limits right, so you right. can do all sorts of things. That's right, that's right. But <clears> here <throat> in Athens, you see everything. Well, they had some outside too, but uh, I, that, I recall that one right off, it's right in town. Okay. But there was others way out in the country, you know, uh, back in the woods. There was a place called Cabin in the Pines. It was way out, out of town, out in Nice, Georgia. And they go out there and they play out there and do all kinds of things out there. So, uh -huh. you know, several places, you know. Okay, yeah. May I ask a question? Yes. Do you recall any clubs or um, being on Hot Corner in Hull in Washington? Uh, um, I know there were, I know there were um, businesses and the, and, uh, and I'm talking probably 50s and, and, and 60s. Hmm. Um, do you recall um, that there being a, a, a performance place there? Um, there were places you could perform down there, but mostly like, most of the restaurants, like cafe and restaurants, that kind of stuff, they, they did juke joints and juke boxes, and they would play that a lot of times. That was all over Hot Corner. That, that was Hot Corner. Was, that's okay. what they did down there. Well, okay. what is Hot Corner? I don't know. I'm not from Athens. What is Hot Corner? That's a street uh, right downtown where, where the Moon Theater is. All that was Hot Corner. It was clubs, restaurants on both sides of the streets up and down. And uh, they would gather there on weekends and and through the week too. But weekends were just crowded. You just where they they went this this restaurant stayed a while, went to the next one. It was just all over the place. But now not necessarily a club down there. Well, nothing but uh, they they would play sometime in the restaurants. You know? Okay. So this was a back black area of town. This is during segregation. Mm, yes. Mm, yeah. So when mm. blacks wanted to have a good time, they would go to Hot Corner. Hot Corner. Okay. And there's another corner called Callaway Corner. Callaway Corner. Where, Where was that located? That's on uh, oh, what's the name of the street? Uh, Hancock and oh wow, Hancock and I'm trying to say not chase chase away on up further. The street way down there, almost downtown to the to the uh, Holiday Inn. Um, I can't think of the name of the street, but it's it's not, it, that well. All the blacks went to to hang out. It's called Callaway Corner, and that was west of yeah. downtown. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. In the Hancock corridor, there was it as far as Millage. Oh no! What if, um, like, what, do you recall? It was two where, streets. Two streets before you oh, get to oh, Millage. That's right, because Hancock is runs parallel to Millage. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it was back down two streets, uh, must have been Hull and something. Okay. In the, <clears throat> it was called Callaway Corner. Okay. And what kind of music were they playing in these clubs and? All kind of music. When you say all kind, were they well, playing? Well, I say all kind, all kind of. Uh, rock music, you know. Was it rock music? White rock music? Or are you talking about no, James Brown? Black, type? black, and they played James Brown in there. And they had the juke, they, I say jukebox, then they, you could put money in and play them, you know. And, um, and so that's pretty much what it was, you know. Because mm -hmm. there weren't any whites in there, in there, just, uh, just blacks. Only blacks. Mm -hmm. What about at night? Was there any kind of night entertainment? In these clubs, were they only open at night or day? No, it was open all day, too. All day. <clears throat> all day and mostly all night. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason I ask is because I know in, in Los Angeles, at least in some cities, at, there's a nighttime area yeah, that's right. open <clears throat> to mm -hmm. maybe young kids mm -hmm. and children during the day, but then at nighttime, you, don't, you only see nothing but entertainment. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes people like, Cap Calloway and um, mm -hmm. Duke Ellington and and Louis Armstrong and all mm -hmm. those people would come and perform at those clubs. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes even white people would come mm -hmm. and hear those musicians in those clubs. So I was wondering, was that anything like that here? Not like that here. It's all black, you know, because you know, we went to see Cap Calloway and all those guys. Then we go to Atlanta or something, they're having something over there. Mm -hmm. We rode to Atlanta. And and then we come back and try to imitate them. <laughs> okay, so none of them came here. 
No, uh, not really. No. In, in the 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 Morton Theater stopped hosting music, and in, uh, in fifty four. So between the time it was built, nineteen ten and nineteen thirty, mm -hmm. it was a vaudeville theater and did have some of the early jazz acts there. Mm -hmm. um, but by the time we're talking, the Morton Theater no longer the no. theater was not was no. up because of the fire. It was right, no, mm -hmm. it was no longer. Um, but but prior to that, the Morton Theater did have it did have those kind of acts. But the, those ended basically around nineteen thirty. What is the Morton Theater? I know you guys know, but. I don't well, know. What is the Morton Theater? I mean, that's where they had performances at, uh, places you have performances at. Okay, uh, but it's called Morton. Why is it called Morton Theater? The guy named him Morton who built it. Who is he? Pete he's Bowers dead. Morton. He's dead now. Is he a black person or something? He's a black person, yeah. Okay, what was his What was his feel? What was I his? don't know what he, what he did, really did. Uh, he was a businessman. Yeah, and businessman. He was... I okay. want to know, what, what was he? What did he do? Like, what did black people think about him? Well, they liked him. They liked him. He finally moved, moved away, I believe. He finally died. And uh, <clears throat> that was where they had big acts come in. They would go down to, okay. down to Morton Theater. So he built it specifically for entertainment? I think so. I think so. Okay. So all of this is... As he was saying, all of this is before your time. Do you think your parents would have gone to, to the Morton Theater? Uh, I don't. I don't think so. I'm really not sure. They didn't go out to much stuff like that, you know. Did so-called church people ever go to the Morton the oh, Theater? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. No church people gonna be church people, you know. <laughs> 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 They're gonna be church people. Uh huh. <clears throat> okay. I'm just trying to get a sense of how the community, the black community, what mm. they thought of the Morton Theater. They so, loved it. They loved it. Okay. So it was sort of a uh, a high class place, or middle class, or low class. It was kind of high, high, high class place, I think. Uh huh. Okay. But that I remember. But that I you remember. remember. I remember a whole lot about it, but. Uh, yeah, because I know sometimes you have a place in the community and someone, even though it's famous, and somebody said, well, I won't send my people there. Mm. I won't go there <clears> because <throat> maybe they don't like the acts that are there or they don't like the community that's there. There's certain mm -hmm. things that happen there. So I'm just trying to get a sense of... Yeah, well, you're going you to always have that where people don't, don't go there because the same things go on there. Uh, but... Uh, <clears throat> but um, I think that that'll always be, you know. Say people won't go there, won't send the people there. They don't care anything about what goes on there. They don't like the acts, and they they won't go. Okay, okay. Um, we're almost at the end now. Want to go back to how how would you describe yourself as a performer? Um, you know, someone came to me and asked. Um, can you give me an idea about Zeke Turner? What should I tell them about you? <laughs> How would you describe yourself? Uh, it's kind of hard to do. Uh, Are you, you sing primarily religious music? Are you sing secular well, music? I do mu religious music all the time. Sometimes I'll throw a song, depending on what kind of event it is. I'll do a off-the-wall song, you know, but uh, most most of the time it's... Uh, religious music and um, I pretty much go along with the flow I'm not hard to get along with you know and uh, so I'd say he's a well I can tell he's a heck of, heck of a nice guy you know <laughs> <laughs> he's a nice guy <laughs> he's, a, he's a nice guy he's a nice guy yeah he's a nice guy if I wanted someone to perform contemporary gospel music like Andre Crouch, should I come to Zeke Turner? Uh, Zeke would uh, Zeke would do do something contemporary. Contemporary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not his number one music, but he'll do it. Okay. For that particular program. Okay. And if I wanted some Thomas Dorsey kind of gospel music, traditional, could he do that? Yeah, he could do that too. He could do that too. Okay, and 
what, what would be special about the gospel music? Why would I hire Zeke as opposed to John Jones over here? Well, Zeke would do a good job. He would, uh, yeah, he would do a good job on whatever he's doing. And uh, the, 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 the music that I do has got to have a story to it, you know. you got to tell a story. And you got to show that when, you, when you're singing. And, um, and uh, Zeke put it right there in front of you. You can see it. So that's what Zeke would do. Okay. Is there anything that you would like us to know about Athens, <laughs> our black music in Athens? One thing I did forget. Okay. What, what about, are there <clears throat> other the names of other performers? who were performing around the time that you were performing, names of other gospel musicians? Yeah, there there's some still around. Uh, they're not singing now. You sing quartet. We were singing when I was doing quartet. You used to sing a lot of quartets at that time. Right. Um, but they, there are many quartets around Athens now. Right. But some of the guys are still around, you know. And in fact, I'm, I'm going to use some of those guys tonight. Uh, what are their names? Do you uh, there were the Lighthouse Gospel Singers, uh, Jerry Wilson. Uh, you Jane, said the, the Jerry li Wilson. Okay, the Lighthouse. Lighthouse Gospel Singers, and uh, James Willis, uh, Henry Grady. Those guys sing the Lighthouse Gospel Singers, and now another group called the Golden Tone, uh, Reverend David. Uh, same with them. Uh, uh, Freddie Jones song with, with the Golden Tones. Melvin Stroud song with the Golden Tones. And there were others. Uh, Fred Wright song with another group. It's a group all around, you know. We sing with it all the time. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I basically stick with the gospel music. Mm -hmm. Don't do a lot of contemporary. Because mm -hmm. to me, contemporary. Just a bunch of words that don't, don't mean anything, sound like to me. And the music is not, not flowing. You know, you can tell when you, you got church music come on, it's a different sound, you know. In contemporary, you got all kind of sounds, you know, when it ends or when it starts or ends. So, uh, and it doesn't really tell a story. So I, I don't like contemporary that well. That well. I'll do something every now and then. If somebody wanted it, I'll, I'll do it. When you tell the story, what kind of message are you trying to give when you in the stories that you tell in your music? Well, it's kind of like uh, <clears throat> I try to do something that got a message, like like uh, is well with my soul. You know the story of well with my soul, how that came about. Is it well with your? Is well with my soul. Is it well with my soul? Yeah. Why don't you tell me what is the story about? Well, it's about a guy he lost all his family, crossed the ocean, and he sat down on the banks and wrote the song. No matter what, I lost everything, but it was still well with my soul at the end. Um, Tommy Dawson did Precious Lord, same type thing. So uh, you need to tell a story in, in the song to mm -hmm. make it good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What kind of instruments do you like to use to accompany your music? I like a lot of music when I'm, uh, when I'm singing. I hardly ever do a cappella. I do it sometimes. I really like to do a cappella. Not now, I used to, but <laughs> I don't have enough wind now to do it. But uh, I like, I like, I like, I like organ, piano, guitar, saxophone. I like all instruments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is there anything else you would like to say? Anything you would like to ask? Um, <clears throat> do you recall? Where you um, recorded with the Mighty Transporteers, was that here in town? In town, yeah. In, well, back, in, back to the street. In which, uh, who had the, the, the recording studio, do you recall? You know, I really don't recall who that was. That was, that was just a little 45 record. Right. Called Records then. Little 45, it was on Baxter Street over there. And did they record only African-American artists, or were they? I think they recorded everybody. Everybody? Everybody came in, yeah. And what year, do you recall about what year that was? Ooh, that was, oh, that's been a long time. 
Let's see, I must have been, gosh, that's probably back in the, probably back in the 50s, I guess, something like that. How many sides did you cut? Just did uh, one, two sides. The two on the, on the 45? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Now, what do you, what type of music do you think young people like? Young people today? Today, they like contemporary music a lot. Because uh -huh. it got a beat to it, you know, they, they got, a, and they're not paying attention to the message. Um, they like contemporary. There are a few black who still like the old traditional gospel, the old hymns, like the hymn book and stuff. V very few um, still like that. A lot of church done took hymn books out of churches, don't have hymn books anymore. And that's, I don't like that because it takes away the story from the kids, you know. You go to church, we had hymn books, come you could read open books, but they don't do hymn, they, they sing what they hear on the radio. And the choirs uh, just sing whatever they want to sing. And they're not structured to mean like it should be. But they basically like contemporary music. And some still like old traditional gospel. Mm -hmm. But uh, the more I think most of them like contemporary stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you have any non non what they call non denominational black churches here? You know um, what I mean. Not that I know of. Mm -mm. Yeah, you know um, these are churches. Sometimes people call them mega churches, mm -hmm. where you have <clears throat> huge, huge, huge church, and normally they have sort of a a song leader, and mm -hmm. they come out and they perform and. Some of them are racially mixed, mm -hmm. but then some of them are uh, predominantly black. And I'm wondering yeah. if you have any of those kind of churches here. Uh, no, not not in Athens. Not uh, in, mm -hmm. They have in Atlanta, I think, is not 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 in, in Athens I don't, that I know of. I see. Yeah, because there's someone. What is his name? Dollar. Crepo Dollar. Crip yes, he has a he has a church in a church too down. In Morton Theater, at fact, fact about him down in Morton Theater, he does some services down there. Oh. So this pastor has his church in Atlanta. He mm -hmm. had a church in Atlanta, right? Mm -hmm. So he comes here and Come he has... do services here. Mm -hmm. Oh, on a regular basis? Every Sunday, I think. Okay. I've never been to one. I've been in ten, but I've never been to one, but I hear he's going pretty good, I guess. Okay. What's his name completely? Clefo Dollar. Oh, okay. And who would go to those services? Anybody who wanted to go. Wanted to go. <laughs> Baptist, Methodist, probably Presbyterian, everybody go. Okay. Go to the church. So like, I think he primarily Baptist church. I went to Atlanta. Um, I, anybody, well, Baptist go to anybody's church. Uh, Methodist go to anybody's church. And they just go to church, you know. Right. I know in Los Angeles, a lot of these mainline churches like Methodist and Baptist, they're losing members. Yeah. And they're going to these big mega big churches, mega these non-denominational churches. Non churches. Right. So I was just wondering if the same thing is happening here in it Athens. It is, it is, it is. A lot of churches, people are, are leaving and they're swapping. They go to one church and they go stay a while and they go to another church and they stay a while and then they go back to that church or they move to another church. They just in confusion on what they're doing now. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, you have those kind of churches here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Well, thank you very and much. I, I okay. saw. I saw. Uh, uh, well, I see it everywhere now. Church, the the people, a lot of people don't go anymore, and they just quit going. The attendance is way down. And consequently, they don't uh, didn't have as many gospel program concerts as they used to. They they cut back on that. They said, Mr. Thomas, she wants you to come, but you know, we don't have any people coming now. You know, we can't afford to pay you anything. So, so they they kind of put it on hold. So, uh, but yes, yeah, a drop off everywhere in churches now. Mm -hmm. um, is that the reason you started performing Southern Gospel? No, I've done Southern Gospel before this come up. Mm. I started out singing Southern Gospel mm. uh, and traditional Gospel. I started out doing that. Mm. And you know because the sound tells you what, what kind of music it is. 
like now songs start, you know, what is what is gospel or not, you know, what is traditional gospel or not. The sound is different. Uh, Southern gospel, Southern gospel, pretty much like traditional gospel, basically. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so you got all that going on. Mm-hmm. Since you go to churches in the white community, are they experiencing the same sort of thing? People not going to yeah, churches? Yeah, it's the same, same thing there. Mm-hmm. I guess I go to probably about um, 95% of white churches. And so I see it all on both sides. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's based because, because actually black people don't really like the soundtrack music. They call it can music. They don't like. They don't like. They want to see the, the musician putting on a show. That's they like to see that. And uh, most white people they want to hear what you're saying, you know. So that's why I, I kind of stick with the southern gospel because you, those churches you can you can tell a story and they, they enjoy that. Mm-hmm. I do a lot of nursing homes and play, and they they enjoy song. They enjoy the old music too, but they a few that still want to hear some contemporary music. So I, I do it all for them. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. But the, you don't mind traveling to go and perform? No, no, I don't mind that at all. You don't all. mind traveling? No, I love doing that. You love doing that. And you go by yourself or you go with family members? No, most, most times by myself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can practice on the way there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it uh, works out fine. Then I'm using soundtrack, and they don't never have a headache. And they don't have a bad day. They don't have attitude today. They can push when they're ready to go. <laughs> got people, they got headache. I don't feel like doing today. I'm not going today, you know. Yeah. So you don't have that with the soundtracks. Were you, did, did you ever use your music for protests? You know, during the Civil Rights Movement, and you had people like Martin Luther King and those kind of people in the community, and they would have various kinds of rallies. And sometimes they would invite, you know, gospel <clears throat> musicians to perform, to lead. Did you I, ever do that? I've, yeah, I've done that some, yeah. I've <laughs> traveled to Atlanta to do a special program they was having, you know. I would go and do that. Mm-hmm. Even here they'd have a program out going in the... Uh, they want, they want, when they, they have those kind of problems, they want to hear something like um, Martin Luther King. They want something that, one of his favorite songs, they want to hear something like that, you know. So you do something like that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but yeah, I've done some program like that, too. Mm-hmm. Well, is there a difference in the way that people receive the music in those, in those situations as opposed to the church? Not really. They, they received uh, about the same as doing churches, you know. Because they have it on the program what you're singing, so they know what you're singing. So they're, they're ready for that, you know. So then you, you go out and you just do it and then enjoy it like they would in church. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. I see. Were you involved in any kind of protests yourself? Did you do any kind of marching during those no, times? No, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't do that. I see. I didn't do that. Did any of your family members, were they involved in? Yeah, my brother, some of my brothers, my younger brothers and sisters did, mm-hmm. but the older one didn't. Uh, Why do you think you didn't want to do it? I just didn't. I didn't well, actually, I didn't have time to do it. So I was always busy doing something. Um, I always worked everywhere, you know, so so I didn't have time to to fool with that. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but I support some things, but I never did got in, never got involved with it, you know, mm-hmm. directly involved with it. So that. Uh, that's why I just I never did any protesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anything? That's it. Well, thank you very much. It was very nice meeting you. It was I good hope, meeting you too. Man. I hope you have a successful performance tonight. Well, I hope so. Okay, <laughs> I, I look together. <laughs> yeah, all right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But I, I've enjoyed this, and uh, thank you for asking me. You know, I, I feel honored to. To do this, I really do. And um, they have having a watch show in uh, Pigeon Forge every year, where they have people um, <clears throat> people come in from all over the world and perform the whole week. And they have judges, and they pick the former like, whole styles of singing and, and acts and stuff like that. And uh, and I was in the traditional category this year. And uh, so I was. Uh, I was the second runner-up, uh, mm-hmm. 
I was the only black person there. Mm, and you're second runner up. Yeah, so that's pretty. That's pretty good. That is. Yeah. Very good. So uh, it's pretty interesting. Pretty interesting to do that. Mm hmm. Is that your only award, or you won some other awards in those? Uh, I've got some more awards. So I actually won first place in that, in that division last year, Male Vocals of the Year. And uh, so, yeah, I have a lot of trophies and mm -hmm. plaques and certificates and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Do they ever record those performances? No, not really. No, they don't. Okay. Which they should, but they don't. They don't, they don't record them. I see. <laughs> Yeah, it would be good to hear you sing in those situations. Yeah, to have you know a recording would, of all of that. It would, would. It would be nice. Yeah, yeah. People be recording on the cameras, you know, but uh, they don't have a national recording for it. I see. And I think the uh, the uh, national quartet convention. I think they record some stuff on the big stage when you're professional. Get on the big stage. They 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 record them. But I never was recorded on. I never made it to the big stage mm -hmm. <laughs> in the quartet convention. I see. Okay. It's really interesting, though. It was in, in uh, started out in, I think, Nashville. Then it moved for years, and then it went to uh, Louisville. It's back in Nashville now. But they was having some kind of war show somewhere, you know. So. Uh, Is this an all-black event or an integrated event? It's an integrated event. But it seems like I'm almost, I'm the only one there always. <laughs> I don't know why that is, but, mm -hmm. but, uh, but I never made it big like Charlie Pride. You know, he made it big. He really sound good at doing Southern gospel. Mm -hmm. And uh, we see a lot of mixed groups now, though. You just didn't do see a lot of mixed groups now. Mm -hmm. um, but they, um, you know, everybody's getting together now better than they used to. Mm -hmm. So it make, makes it really nice. I see. So when you play, when you would perform in a quartet in that situation, you would be performing with who? With, with some white uh, white musicians or what? No, it was a black musician. The quartet. Uh huh. <coughs> mm, they were black musicians. Okay. <coughs> so you. When the quartet, you only had uh, like guitar, guitar and drum, bass guitar, lead guitar and drummer, most with quartet. They got some everything now, but they got the big keyboards and stuff. But basically, when I was growing up, you just had lead guitar, bass guitar, and drum, okay. and that was it. I see. Sometimes you did a cappella. We actually started out saying a cappella, no music at all. So. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And that's when you were with the... Transporteers. Transporteers. Mm -hmm. But now, are you saying that there are quartets that you participate in? Or is it just the solo? Just the solo now. Okay. After I left Georgia Mass, I went back to solo because I was Georgia Mass. It kept me going all the time. On weekend, we was going somewhere. Yeah, I take off Friday and Monday from work and stuff, and then I couldn't do my performances on Sunday as a soloist. So I kind of got tired of that. So, okay. yeah. and I like that because one thing you didn't get never got paid for that. You just did it because you wanted to do it. And sometimes I had to pay your hotel and this kind of stuff. Mm. So uh, that got old pretty quick. Right. <laughs> I stayed in George Mass about 10 years because right. I enjoyed singing, I enjoyed the travel, you know, so it was pretty nice. So when you were talking about, you know, going and participating in Nashville and then Kentucky and then back to Nashville, so what time period was that? What years were that? was that? Well, that, I went back to Nashville about two years ago. I don't know how long they stayed in Louisville. I didn't, I didn't know anything about it until till Louisville. Okay. And there was a group down at, um, down at Douglasville, Georgia, inviting me to go to, to, to Louisville. Okay, let me see if I'm understanding. So what is the name of the organization or the event that took place in Nashville? What is it called? Yeah, it's a quartet convention. It's a quartet convention. Mm -hmm. But you're performing as an individual. Soloist, yeah. A soloist. Yeah. So that's what confused me. Okay. Yeah, no, there's a quartet, a quartet, most of quartets in groups, but uh, I went as an individual because they, they thought I was good enough to perform with them. So they'll take in something like that, you know, so that's how I got to go. Okay. And that's a competition, or are you just entertaining people? You're just entertaining, really. Mm -hmm. 
the quartet can bring you entertaining. Mm -hmm. But uh, over at uh, Pigeon Forge last week, there was a, there was a con contest, you know. I really don't like to do contest stuff when you're singing gospel music. You, I don't think don't do that, but sometimes you do it, but uh, I just did it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you won something. You made it. You won yes, an award. A trophy. A trophy. <laughs> and the year before, you say you don't like to do it, but you're doing it and you're yeah. winning these awards. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it. Just, <laughs> it's, it's singing. It's just singing. And uh, I don't get too involved in it, but I, I'll do it sometime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, if they, they, they thought I was good enough to be there, you know, I'll, I'll go. Mm -hmm. So, but most times, always <laughs> one black in the group. <laughs> Why do you think there's only one black? I I don't know. A lot of them as good as me, I guess you know, but they just just don't want to get involved in it, you know. So, how many people attend this convention? About how many people? Is it hundreds of people? Or thousands? Hundreds of people, thousands of people, quartet convention. Yeah, because there was. Those those uh, white quartets, they got these big buses and see buses and line up for, for blocks and blocks and buses, you know, and they travel from everywhere to come. So, um, but I just jump in the car and go up. And you're the only one black person at this event. Well, it's the only one I saw. Yeah, you're the only one. Only one. Yeah, only one I saw. Yeah. Um, there's another group. There was a a black group. A guy and his wife and two other people. They they sound professional with the group. They they travel a lot. Mm -hmm. Do you know where they were from? They were from South Carolina. So this is regional people from. Well, no, they were from all over the world. All know. over the world. But this group happened to be from South Carolina. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, anything else you would like to add? No, I, I, um, I was gonna say, I was gonna say, I, I jotted down some stuff about these different styles of music. Okay. But we talked about that other day. Right. But Go ahead it, and tell me. No, it's, it's pretty much the same thing. It's just uh, different styles, and you kind of know about sound. If it's country music, you kind of tell what's country, and like they sound country. Yeah. So. You know. How? What makes you know that it's country? Then, what are the you know? What are the character? What's how? What is the sound? Well, how would you describe well, it? Well, they sing kind of like they talk, you know. Uh, the music it, it sound it it, it sounds like if you're talking, you talk country, you know, kind of not flat, but uh, just have a different sound, the way they end their words, end their words, kind of they swing their words a little bit. And Southern golf, that like tradition, hit right on it. And uh, so it's just kind of in coast, uh, 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 bluegrass gospel really fast, mostly, mostly guitars and that kind of thing with, with uh, uh, bluegrass music. And you got different instruments go with all kind of music. So all of it basically the same, but it's got that little different sound to it. How to end the words and start it and this kind of thing. So you've now out outlined traditional mm -hmm. southern mm -hmm. bluegrass. Mm -hmm. All of these are different styles of gospel. A different style. Okay. And it seems like most of these are sort of identified with white gospel music. But actually no, well, in a way, but actually the, the traditional gospel came from black people from back into slavery. Right. That's how the traditional gospel music got started. And the whites kind of picked up on it, you know, and they're still doing it. And they used, didn't sing the good, they sing it now, though. <laughs> they, they're whooping it now. Okay. But, uh, but it's pretty much the same. But the Southern gospel and the bluegrass gospel is that with blacks and whites, or primarily with whites? Primarily white. Okay. Call myself Southern Gospel, bluegrass, bluegrass gospel. Okay. Okay. Would both of them have instruments? Would Southern yeah. Gospel have instruments? Yeah. Southern Gospel got instruments too. And would they have different kinds of instruments? They have all kind of instruments. They have piano, organ, guitar, bass, saxophone, trumpet. They have everything. Bluegrass does too. 
but they play them differently. It got different beats and different sound to it. Um, but it's all basically the same. Mm -hmm. Is there another kind in addition to those? No, nah, not that I know of. Mm -hmm. And you sing which kind the best? <laughs> well, which one do you think is your favorite or you think you do the best? Uh, traditional and, and Southern gospel. I have a couple of tunes I do bluegrass uh, and country, but mostly most traditional and uh, Southern gospel. Mm -hmm. Are you able to demonstrate <laughs> some of the, um, <laughs> the Southern gospel? Wow. You don't have to, but are you able? I've never heard your voice, so I'm just oh, curious. Okay. I'm never, and, and I guess I don't know Southern gospel. Mm -hmm. I never heard of Southern gospel until you told me about it. Really? Yes. Yeah. So, I'm and just, I don't know why they call it Southern gospel, but they do. But basically, it's traditional gospel is run off of um, black gospel. Is and, that to uh, distinguish it as? white performers as opposed to black performers? Because sometimes you put a different label, like um, what James Brown was doing is one thing, and then you may yeah. find a white group doing the same thing, and they may begin calling it rock. Yeah. Um, you know, or, no, or something like I don't that. Know I don't how know how that got started, but um, that was the rock and all, I don't know how those different terms got started. But, right, uh, but I'm just wondering, is it the same thing with um, gospel? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I hear the word traditional gospel, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be expecting to see some black people performing. Well, not, not now. Not Used now. to, when you said some gospel, you hear some black people singing. Okay. Everybody's singing everything now. Okay. So, so when did Southern gospel come into existence? Was it? I don't, how, I don't know how that got started. Okay. I don't, I don't, I don't really don't know how that got started. Uh-huh. But a lot yeah. of the young people like old traditional gospel, Southern gospel, too. Okay. You use the word interchangeably. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So is there anything else that you wrote down that you want us no, to... No, I, I, I got two pages of stuff. It's a oh. long story. I don't want to get oh, it. Oh, can I... Can, may I see it? Yeah, you can see it. I, I, but, uh, if you took the time to write it down. Well, I want to get it, but it's so much I, I couldn't tell it all, couldn't talk about yeah, it Yeah, so. I jot it down, I'm going to pick out a couple things to talk about. Yeah, no. but um, we want your entire story. So if you took the time to write something down, we want to make sure it gets on record. <clears throat> okay. Call and smile. Uh-huh. Okay, the difference between traditional and contemporary uh, melodic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's several subtypes, tra traditional quartet, traditional choir, classic hymn, traditional a cappella. Okay, I think we've, we've covered some of that. Yeah, a little I've, bit. Yeah. Here you say something about radio. radio. We haven't talked about, you said, I've been in radio for more than 10 years. Have you been in radio? No, I sing on radio a lot. You I, sing on radio? I sing on radio a lot. Mm. What radio station? Well, the station here was uh, WGAU. We sing on Sunday mornings, that early Sunday morning. We go in and do a 30-minute show. Mm -hmm. That's when I was singing quartet. Okay, <clears throat> okay. So there was only one radio station in the city? Well, there's always been two. WGAU, what I'm thinking of. What it, w G A U. Okay. Because they have a, another one now is uh, W X A G, and uh, and uh, they do uh, gospel music and uh, and rock music, you know. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, In my hometown of Jessup, Georgia, which is smaller, there was only one radio station. There was no blacks on the radio. Mm. There was no blacks on the radio, primarily country music, and my mom loved country music. Mm -hmm. The only time you would hear blacks would be on Sunday mornings, and it was maybe the first two or three hours from yeah. about 7 to about 10 a.m., mm -hmm. and that's when you would have maybe black people coming on right. singing their music. Mm -hmm. So... <clears throat> What's the situation here? Did you have black people performing throughout 
the day or just a certain time? It's a certain the time of the day. Uh -huh. It is uh, DJ's a black guy, DJ, this jock, you know, radio station. He, he have quartets coming early on Sunday mornings and saying sometimes on Wednesday nights they would have a 30 minute show or something like that. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it was here. Okay. Do you remember the name of the show on Wednesday night? No, I don't remember the name of it. Yeah. The same thing in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. They used to have a Wednesday night show, a radio program, primarily for blacks. Mm -hmm. And all of the rest <clears throat> of it during the day, all of the airtime was for whites. But yeah. they had to the, block out these times yep. when mm -hmm. black people would perform or yep. they would invite people from the audience, mm -hmm. I mean, from the community to come yep. and live. Mm -hmm. That's what they did here. They did that here too. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So, is there anything else? I, I enjoyed this. I really did. I hope it'd be helpful somewhere over here, you know. Uh, and uh, that's my thing. I was trying to help somebody in some way. So, that's, that's what Zeke's about. Right. We want more people to know about the contributions of mm -hmm. Zeke Turner mm -hmm. and other, other people here in, um, in Athens. Mm -hmm. So we want to know about what black people have done, what white people mm -hmm. have done, mm -hmm. what Asians have done. So we want everybody, at least this is what we do at UCLA. Yeah. Everybody has made a contribution. Yeah. So it's everybody kind of, needs to be represented in these institutions. Yeah, that's kind of so, what it is, yeah. Yeah, so that's why it's important that we have your story. Mm -hmm. And if you know the story of anybody else or either any other people that they need to you know, um, interview so they can have them, you know, you should let them know that mm -hmm. That person needs to be contacted. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we want everybody, a good representation. Yeah, okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you all.